Hello, and here's another episode of the Night Shift Podcast. I know this is our fifth Night Shift Podcast video in a row. I promise you we'll have a couple of Urbexing videos coming up soon, and hopefully a couple uh, skeptic or Supernatural Skeptic videos coming up soon. In fact, one of them out of the three is a cryptid video versus a ghost video. In case you didn't know, Supernatural Skeptics is where we investigate the paranormal, but we're skeptics. We don't believe in ghosts or anything like that. So, yeah, it makes it pretty unique. Today's video, as you can see, is about the time I handled the dead body. Now, I respected the old woman. I'm not going to mention her name. I was friendly acquaintances with her, but didn't really know her too well. She just basically stayed in her apartment. But anyways, in this building where I live, this apartment building, where Scruffy Lynx and I both live, actually, um, it's full of lots of old people. In fact, a second person died about two weeks ago, who I didn't know, upstairs. This isn't about them. This is about the time, six months ago, it was 9 p.m., it was dark out because it was the winter. I was sitting in my apartment, and I hear sporadic knocking on my door. So I go to the door, answer it, it was the mother's daughter, who's like, my mom's not breathing, we need you to come help lift her up and take, put her on the ground so she's lying on her back. Um, can you come help me? So we ran to her apartment down the hall, and I walked in, and the dead lady was, well, we didn't know she was dead at the time. But anyways, the dead lady was sitting in her chair upright with her eyes closed. And the paramedics were on the speakerphone, and they were on their way, but they were giving us instructions before we got, before they got there. They were saying, lift her up and put her on the floor. And we tried together, and she was just way too heavy, way too big, it was way too awkward. So then the paramedics said, how about you recline her chair back with a lever and make it so she's more lying down in the chair versus sitting upright in the chair? So I went... To reach for her lever, which is against the wall. Inside the chair that had the lever was against the wall. So I had to put my hand on her arm on the, to reach over across her and pull the lever. And I noticed when I grabbed her arm, it was very stiff. It didn't bend at the el elbow very much. And that made me, make me think of, uh-oh, rigor mortis. In case you don't know, rigor mortis happens about two to four hours after you die. Your body becomes extremely stiff. Very, very hard, stiff like a board. But I didn't want to say anything because I'd still cling on to hope that she was still alive. So anyways, I reclined her chair. She kind of molded back into a lying position a little bit. Like I said, she's still very stiff. And the daughter was instructed to pump her chest and count. But she was crying so hard. She was pumping her chest, but she was crying so hard. I counted for her because the paramedic on the phone kept saying, Count with me, count with me. I need to hear you counting. So I counted one, two, three, four, five. I think we got up to like 30 or 40 pumps when the paramedics walked in and they immediately moved and touched her jaw and they're like, I'm sorry ma'am, but your mother has rigor mortis and she's been gone for quite some time now, a couple hours. And she just started crying, understandably, and even I was a little bit emotional, I'm like, oh this sucks. I wish I could have saved your life, but as we found out later, she was dead when I already walked in. It kind of creeped me out, touching a dead body. The closest thing that I touched to a dead body was a deer I shot when I was hunting with my old stepdad. Um, but that was a deer that I shot. This was a human being, and it creeped me out. I had, like, the chills for a couple nights and felt gross. Even if I wanted to take a shower, it still felt gross. I was still like, oh, I touched a dead body. And psychologically, it was a little bit weird for me, too. Um, especially before I knew she was dead when I already arrived. Like, what if I did this differently because she had lived? But we found out later she, she was actually dead for a day or two. Um, she hasn't started decaying, but she was about to already start to de de decay. And how we found out she was dying for a day or two is immediately the rumors came across the apartment that someone died. And my friend Jane, who lives here, or Jan, sorry, who lives across the hall from me, was saying, Yeah, I usually walk while having my cigarette across uh, her her balcony way. Um, I can look in through to her apartment. And usually she always has the blinds open and she's watching TV and she waves to me when I wave to her. But yesterday she had her blinds shut. Which is very odd for her, and we were figuring, oh, well, she's probably already dead at that point. So she was dead for a day, day and a half before we even got to her. So anyways, that's the creepy little video I have about the time I handled the dead body. Um, still gives me the creeps. My friend ZJ, he um, called me every day after that for about a week, asking how I was doing, because he knew it kind of creeped me out a little bit. And uh, I'm a very sensitive person. I don't handle weird or traumatic things very well. I mean, I am a happy person. I've been doing better lately, but death of close ones I don't handle very well and stuff like that. But anyways, that is a short video of the time I handled a dead body on the night shift. Like I said, I promise you we will have 
two more, about two new Urbexan videos for you, and three um, Supernatural Skeptic videos for you. So anyways, you guys all have a great night, and stay spooky.